Good, good afternoon, Rotarians. Welcome to our Rotary meeting, November 8th. Guests, visiting Rotarians joining us virtually on Zoom, please identify yourself in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, register your participation by sending an email to info at rotarygainesville.org. First on our agenda, we have Peter Enwall. I'm, I'm noticing that microphone is really doing well today. So, okay. All right. Well, Tom Donahue's not here today, so he probably knew I was going to tell this story on him. Where do you go? Just walked in. Okay. Well, too bad. Uh, Tom uh, is a member of Queen of Peace, as many of you may know, and he went to his priest, Father Al, and he said, Father Al, uh, exactly how do you make holy water holy? And Father Al looked at him and said, well, Tom, first you take a, a big pot and fill it with water, and you put it on the stove, turn the burners up as high as you can, and then you boil the hell out of it. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> We're going to sing uh, America the Beautiful today because it's Veterans Day for us. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of the rain, for for mountains, the seas of the land. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Join me in pledging allegiance to our flag on this special day. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Glitches, glitches. We're, uh, we're supposed to do this later. Yeah, yeah, according to my thing. Tom and Greg handled club business. Tom and Greg, handle club is made. Okay. All right, Tom and Greg. Let me give you Tom Donahue. Sorry for my tardiness, folks. A little wreck on the interstate and a traffic jam for a while. We have an invocation today after our Pledge of Allegiance. Ian Fletcher is what I have on my schedule. I didn't have to confirm that today. Is Ian present? Want me to ad lib after he uh, made fun of me with Father Al? I can do that. I didn't even hear the punchline because I was talking to Brendan for a moment. But yeah, let's bow our heads, ladies and gentlemen. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift that is this day. Thank you for the food and the nourishment of our bodies here as we meet as a group collectively at Rotary, the Rotary Club of Gainesville. Please protect those in the path of Tropical Storm Nicole. They may come through safely and the storm does not affect our area. Please bless our efforts to make our community better. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now we welcome our guests. You may be seated unless you are visiting us. And Bill, you get the award for the best shirt of the day. I love it. Pizza Bill. Yeah, we can bring you on. Brendan will have the mic today. Here you go, Bill. Or Bill will do it. You can always spot him in a crowd. Okay, so I have I have Galen, Galen, right, Galen? And Galen's parents are here. This is Doug and Rachel. And Galen is uh, going to be going to the Rotary Youth Exchange. At least that's her plan, okay? And... Um, to my left here is Tom or Tony. I like to call him Tony because he should be named Tony Valenzola. And uh, he's a retired phys ed teacher from New Jersey, <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> he also plays golf with me and he's a veteran. 
and um, Doug's a veteran as well, right, Doug? Okay. And then I talked uh, Chris Bird into coming. Chris was uh, at the Wine to Waters Festival last week, and Chris is the retired director of Alachua County Conservation, Environmental Conservation. He actually got an, uh, a lifetime award from those folks, and he's been working for multiple, multiple years uh, protecting the environment here in Alachua. So Chris is my guest. And these folks and Tony, they got low standards today. All right. Thank you, Bill, for the longest rotary introduction to date. And it's my pleasure to introduce two other candidates for um, the Rotary Youth Exchange Program. This is mm -hmm. Sam Madsen, and uh, this is Sky King, and this is Sky's grandmother, Rachel. And uh, yeah, uh, they are our guests today. Um, it is their uh, responsibility to have our president uh, endorse their candidacy. So our club is endorsing their candidacy uh, by fill, uh, signing these papers today. And um, they're in the uh, application process. So we're also in the process of uh, scheduling home visits, which is a part of the application project uh, process. And then um, later in the month, uh, they will go to um, the district interviews, which is usually in St. Augustine at the college there. So um, it's a long process, but the, the students that go abroad, the number is determined uh, by the number of um, students we agree to host in our Rotary Clubs. So uh, we won't know till the end who is selected, but they're in the process and we're glad to uh, endorse them. Uh, Good afternoon, Rotarians, Bobby Hall. I'm pleased to introduce my guest today, Marion Colburn. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to do with it? Bill, one more. One more in the back. Oh. Boy, look at there. <laughs> I know it's not jealous. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Ben, Ben, I'm coming all the way back here. I was going to get a hug from you, but I'll get a hug from your guest instead. <laughs> ben. I like your style, Bill. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Sarah Walt. Uh, Gus Walt with Wortham Construction, and she's interested in becoming a Rotarian, so she's interested in our club, so she showed up today, and make her welcome, please. Sarah. Welcome to each and every one of you to our meeting today. We have a few announcements to be made. Is that still a violation? Where's our uh, president? Her phone's going off during the uh, the meeting. Yeah, I'm an old softy though. Our first announcement for the benefit of our group today comes to us from Jacob Atem. Jacob, come on up. You can applaud Jacob. He loves applause. Yes, well, good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Um, raise your hand if you were here last week on Wine to Water event. Thank you so much for being here and supporting us. I want to announce to some of my fellow Rotarians who is not here, our organization, Southern Sudan Healthcare Organization, was the recipient of the international uh, organization to support for water and wash. And I just want to thank you for the support. And this is from the downtown Rotary Club. And I'm less than two years into Rotary uh, here in Gainesville and in our club. And what 
make me excited is the teamwork between not just only our our club, but also other club. As last week, I don't know, this week actually, you may remember Gainesville Opportunity Center, Brent is actually from that club. And I went and see where we're gonna contribute that 60,000 for the open house. And again, to me, why I'm excited to be part of Rotary is a teamwork locally and globally and bilateral relationship between the GOC, between the downtown Rotary Club and here. Think about it. I'm the recipient from your club. And now, previously, Brent was a recipient from other clubs. So I just want to let you know about the good news. We're going to apply for, um, for the international global grant. But I'm just so happy and thank you for the support. And thank you for teaching me to take care of our local community here. I'm trying to submerge in. I'm a young uh, Rotarian. So if you are new, I just, I wish I could serve locally and globally, but thank you for providing this opportunity for us. And thank you for supporting uh, SSACO and the Rotary Club. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jacob. Next, please welcome to the podium, Elena Frazier. Hello, fellow Rotarians. Don't forget, December 6th is our international auction, which is going to be benefiting Sustainable Cambodia. We have a plethora of wonderful things that you all have helped donate. And if you did donate something or you signed up to give a certificate, please make sure you get those to me by the next meeting. That way we can get them cataloged and start showing everybody the wonderful things that you've donated. Also, we still need a few things. So if anybody's got something they'd like to donate, please let us know. Now, we have some wonderful live auction things that are coming up. And one of them is from this wonderful woman here in this great outfit. So I'm gonna let Nancy tell you all about it. I'm here to invite you to bid on the opportunity to tally ho with Misty Morning Hounds. I bet you don't know that we have an amazing fox hunt here in Rochelle, Florida, and we don't even kill a fox. The hounds are trained to follow the scent of anisette, which we buy at the liquor store, and at the end of each run, they are rewarded with dog cookies and meat scraps. Now, if you want to know how famous we are, here we are on the cover of a book written by the most famous fox hunt photographer in the world. And the foreword is written by HRH, the Prince of Wales, who is now King Charles III. And this is a photo of us on the calendar of the Fox Hunt Association of America. And I'm in it and my kids are in it, but what's better is you can see how the hounds run. So. If you bid on this, we will host you to one of our hunts and we'll put you in a tally ho wagon. You don't have to ride a horse. You don't have to wear fancy gear, just dress for the weather. You will be offered a glass of port before we ever start. And it's a little bit like a rolling cocktail party. There will be things to eat and drink. And then at the end, we'll have lunch. So if you're really nice, we'll take you in the mansion, which is somewhat like a Downton Abbey mansion for a tour afterwards. It's a fabulous house right here in Alachua County. Get it up. Get it up. I might be interested in that, but I want to ride the horse. I want to wear the outfit. Is that allowed? Let's bring up next to speak to us about the seafood spectacular, Dwight McKee. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, wanted to make an important announcement about the Seafood Spectacular. Uh, unfortunately, this storm called Nicole is messing everything up. We are determined to have this event. We haven't had it in three years. Um, and we thought everything was gonna go great for uh, this coming Thursday, but tropical storm is coming. So we made the executive decision to postpone the event. So the event has now been postponed to Thursday, December 8th. Okay, so mark your calendars, look at your flyers on here. The good news is, um, 
What does that what what does that good news mean, Matt? What do we can sell more tickets. How about that? All right, we can sell more tickets. Um, it's going to be a great event. We had a great turnout last week for cleanup. I just want to recognize the people that came out. Um, Ed Book from downtown, uh, Tony Barr from Greater Gainesville, and Bradley Davis, Marsha Eubank, Wesley Eubank from Greater Gainesville. We had Linda Reinhardt, Jason Shank, Kurt Thomas, John Thomas, and Greg Young from Greater from Gainesville. And then from Greater Gainesville, we had Mike Thompson, Tom Wisleski, and uh, Tim Rogers come out and help. So we got the event all set up. We have all the tables set up, everything covered. We had the food lines set up. Um, the beer is being delivered this week, all this stuff. So we've had to backtrack and uh, um, kind of pull things back for two weeks. So again, Mark your calendars. It's going to be a great event. We'll we'll turn it into a Christmas seafood spectacular. How about that? Since it's going to be December, and uh, tickets are available, sixty dollars. Get five for two fifty. Okay. If anybody has any questions about anything, please just let me know. Thank you. One more announcement. That's it. I promise. Up next, Ryan Thompson. Uh, good afternoon. Um, on your table are ballots for your recommendations for board members for 2023 to 2025. Uh, we're looking for people that have been active in the club, obviously, um, and uh, haven't served on the board in the last two years. Uh, we're also looking for recommendations for a secretary. Uh, that's somebody that has served on the board in the last five years. So if you could please fill these out, uh, we'll be around after the meeting to pick them up. If you're on Zoom, my email address is in the chat and you can just email me your recommendations and we appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back um, on November 29th uh, with the ballot for you all to make your final selections. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ryan. We have one more item before we bring your president forward. It's time for a poem. Are you ready? What's that in your shirt, John? A prop? Oh, that's your poem. Ladies and gentlemen, John Gregory. This poem is called um, Veterans Election Day. Let me give you a clue. I'm sure it's not new. It might seem strange, but when the enemy is in range, I believe you are too. The bugler was found to be bawling the night before he'd been brawling. The troops slept too long since they didn't hear the song when the bugler overslept and missed his calling. No, there's more. <laughs> the debate folks are saying whoppers, and often they, they are stating stoppers. But as you can see well, they sure made me tell, the politicians are blame droppers. One useless man we need to bless. Two useless men, a law firm, we'd, we'd dress. But three or more, unless for sure, is simply called a Congress. Go vote. <laughs> Wonderful job, John. I don't know with the helmet, if you remind me more of Patton or Eisenhower with that helmet on. Oh, he just said it, that you remind him with the helmet on of Gomer Pyle. I don't know if anybody could hear that. Shazam, shazam, shazam. Well, that being said, 
Let's bring up your president, everyone, Greg Young. Thank you, Tom. Good job as always. And thanks, Brendan, for filling in as Tom was making his way here. I hope everyone was okay in that accident there. It's great to see everyone here today and those on Zoom attending. Thank you for attending there as well. Um, you heard about the seafood announcement uh, being postponed, rescheduled, what we like to say. And uh, so that means there'll be not another opportunity to help us at the cleanup site or clean up the site. So we, we have to do a little tidying up before uh, the 8th. Uh, also want to uh, welcome myself. A few faces in the crowd. I think John Cousins is here and a few other people that I haven't seen in a while. So just want to recognize people as they come back and join us. And, and, and Davis Rimbert's right there in front of me. How could I miss him? So, And welcome to some new guests and new members that will be voted on at the next uh, meeting. So um, I want to get right to the chase here. Oh, one last thing. Uh, just real quickly, Gordon wanted me to make an announcement that uh, one more announcement. Uh, Thursday, December 1st is a sing-along at Gordon and Kate Hubble's home. So mark your calendar and then coordinate with Gordon on that or me, and we'll uh, we have a capacity because it's inside. So just let's keep that one, December 1st, Thursday. Um, right now, I want to bring up our, our Margaret Combs, who will be, uh, if you come on up, Margaret. She's graciously organized today's presentation. Yes, please. She's organized today's presentation and got our speaker here today back, which I'm so happy to see. And with that said, I want to get out of the way and let Margaret proceed. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Um, it's auspicious that this is both Veterans Day and the day that we're all voting, or if we haven't already, but the day that it, it culminates. Um, we want to do some traditional things. Number one, uh, as Gordon plays uh, for each of the military branches, would those that served in it please stand and remain standing? when he has completed all of the branches of the service and all of our veterans are standing, would those of you, the rest of you, would you stand and applaud our veterans? Then after that, we're going to sing a song that Pete's going to lead us in. The words are on the table called, This Is My Country. And the objective here is to get us in the mood for our speaker that we'll introduce at that time. Gordon, are you ready for the salute to the veterans? Please stand as you hear your branch's song. Gordon? Would you come up? Would the rest of you please rise and applaud your fellow Rotarians who have served? All right, this is my country. Uh, Gordon, can you give us the key? Ready, all right. This is my country, land of my birth. This is my country, grandest on earth. I pledge my allegiance, America the bold, for this is 
is my country to have and to hold. This is my country, land of my choice. This is my country. Thank you, our veterans. We appreciate all that you have done. And we wanted to talk today. It's wonderful, and we know that you feel the appreciation of a nation. But it's important for us to talk today about a broader subject when it comes to what is happening with our veterans. And so with the gentle suggestion of our president, Greg, we are fortunate to have back with us Michael Anthony, who if you were here last year, shared in the program last year. A little bit about Michael. He was spent 20 years um, with Publix, uh, training and teaching the managers of Publix. And then he decided it was time that he go into service of others. And he became first the executive director and then the CEO of Gratitude America, a wonderful organization that works with our veterans in a very special way and with their families to give them the direction, the guidance, the assistance, and the support to help them to begin to live their lives well again. Um, Michael has, is uh, in the US Army. He is a reserve uh, major in the Army and he is based, this is really sad, he's based in Hawaii. So <laughs> six weeks out of the year, um, we lose Michael to Hawaii, but he's in constant contact with everyone at Gratitude America. Michael, uh, would you please join us and uh, present to us? So again, what a wonderful opportunity to be able to be back with you again. Is this better? Better? Oh, wow, that's good. Yeah, it is. It's lovely to be back, uh, you know, here in, in Gainesville to be able to speak with you. Um, for those of you that were here last year, you know, I, we, we kind of had a truncated uh, opportunity to speak. So having the opportunity to come back and speak a little bit longer is quite an honor. So thank you for the invite. Um, again, uh, you know, I think Margaret did a great job of just kind of, you know, giving a background and an intro. But uh, the, the long and short of it is Gratitude America is a nonprofit organization based in Florida. And here we do four and seven day programs for combat veterans who are stuff, suffering from post-traumatic stress, suicide ideations, depression, so on and so forth. And I truly believe we're making a difference and I'm gonna lay that case out for you briefly. This is our publicly stated promise. Wait, there we go. Okay, hold on. Maybe you could just hit the next slide or maybe this is off. Uh. Ah, you'd think as the guy who spent his life corporate educating, I could run one of these things. But anyway, this is our publicly stated promise. Uh, we work with veterans, uh, first responders, and those who care for them by delivering proven programs. And we're focusing on trying to reinvigorate uh, a focus on their greatest strengths so that they can live the lives that they deserve because our combat veterans deserve the best. Now, one thing that you'll see, of course, is, or, or maybe know as somebody who's not in the space, is that the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, thank God, are over with. And that's a great thing. I don't think any veteran um, who's been to war wants war. It's a terrible thing. But as we think about, oh, the wars are over, what we don't talk about is what's left behind. You'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a, a small graphic that shows as the physical injuries of combat have gone down, the loss of limbs and you know all the awful things that come with combat. 
the rise in psychological wounds is overwhelming. And it is why I left a very good career as an executive at Publix to spend time training uh, some of the best that our community has to offer because it truly does uh, require training in order to bring veterans back to home in a way that's different. Meaning the military spent a lot of money training and the veterans in this room can tell you a lot of money training us to go to war. However, upon our return home, there's very little training to reintegrate into society. I distinctly, I'll tell the story often, but I distinctly remember I was shot at on a Thursday in Northern Iraq. A bullet went <clears throat> straight through the front of the vehicle that I was in. And uh, thank goodness nobody was hurt. I got on a plane, I flew home and I was in Lakeland, Florida at the corporate offices the following Thursday. And there was uh, two folks that were complaining that we didn't have the right flavor of coffee creamer in, in the break room. Very difficult to decompress in a week and figure that out. So, I mean, I went overseas to fight so that you could have the coffee creamer you want, right? But at the same time, it's very difficult to integrate. So we're seeing that. So though the war is over, the psychological wounds are, are raging. And, and, you know, if you stay connected at all to any sort of press, you know this, you've heard this, but I'm going to demonstrate uh, with some numbers and with some of our experience at Gratitude America, how there has been no change in the plight for the last 20 years. This picture is actually not mine, but I pulled it because it integrates a couple of things that are very, very widely understood within the veteran community. The first is you see this uh, service member, our, our soldier, Army, uh, wearing a mask. These masks were actually started by a psychologist at the National Center for the Intrepid, uh, where they are using expressive arts to allow veterans to express their thoughts, the things that they may not be able to articulate through speech. And what we do at our programs at Gratitude America is we also incorporate expressive arts and we have the vets make masks. There is a very common theme amongst these masks, light to dark, patriotic to despair, so on and so forth. And you'll see this particular veteran, you know, you, you can, you just see it on, on the face in this mask. And it's just a way to express, I have love for my country, but I feel like my country let me down a bit. The other thing, and I'm not going to read all this so you can read it, but um, what you'll note is the traditional therapies for post-traumatic stress, for suicide ideation, for depression, and so on and so forth are not working. Uh, the biggest solution right now that the government has to offer is pills. And that's why this picture is, is great. When veterans come to our in-residence program, they bring Publix bags full of pills because you get one and then that one has side effects and you get another and another and another. And it's not uncommon for a veteran to be taking 15, 20, 30 medications. How can someone live when they're taking that many pills? It's no way to live. Maybe it works and I'm not, I'm not a clinician. So I'm not here to comment on whether the pills are good or not. But to me as a lay person, that's just too much. My last appointment at the VA, I was injured in a rocket attack on Christmas day in 2008. My last appointment at the VA for my back pain was 90 Oxycontin with 11 refills. I fired the VA. I went to UF, UF treated me well. So with that said, there's just a, there's some problems that we're not addressing. More pills is not gonna do it. Additionally, you've heard of the plight of veteran suicide. I found this number to be staggering. This is active duty suicides, not veteran, but actually actively serving. Four times more active duty veterans have committed suicide than were killed in the entire 20 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's awful. I was trying to think of a way to express to you the plight of veteran suicide. So that was active duty. There are far more veterans than there are that are serving on active duty. That makes clear sense, right? How do I express the, on average, 6,000 suicides that occur every year, right? Many people have heard about the 22 veterans a day who commit suicide. There's a big campaign to promote that. How do you represent 6,000 suicides a day, or rather a year, excuse me, for 20 years? So I started to do some calculations. And what I figured out was, if from today, every minute, we were to represent a suicide per minute of veterans, right? And we started counting from this moment forward, we would recognize one minute for one veteran from now until Valentine's Day. That's when we'd stop counting for the number of suicides that we've had in the last 20 years. We're not doing anything to make a difference. We're making awareness, but the suicide numbers have not changed in 20 years. So if from this point forward, we don't do something different in the next 20 years, if we represented a suicide per minute, it would be Memorial Day before we stop counting. And that's despicable. And I know that that leaves a sinking feeling and it kind of brings the mood down from singing all these wonderful songs, but we have an opportunity to make a difference and we have 
begun to make a difference, but ever so small in our little corner of the world. The other troubling thing is there is a nonprofit known as America's Warrior Partnership, and they did a, a, what they call Operation Deep Dive, where they dug into the suicide numbers. And what they found was that the government is actually uh, unintentionally, but is underreporting suicides because a lot of veterans uh, will do things like um, create an accident when they complete suicide. So their families will get insurance money, so on and so forth. So they actually believe that the suicide rate through their study is actually 1.3% higher, um, which means we could have not 22 a day, but we could have, you know, more than double that. And so the, the plight is actually larger. There was a, there, in 2019, the VA reported that the suicide rate of 22 a day dropped to 20 a day. And everybody got super excited because that's wonderful news. But now we come out with a nonprofit, nonpartisan report, and this is what we see. It's not getting a lot better. We need to do better. Now, what you'll see, oh, there we go is there are lots of well-intended groups and nonprofits that are trying to raise awareness of the 22 suicides a day. Many of you might've been involved in a push-up challenge or you know, have given $22 or there's all these things, these awareness campaigns. In my town of Fernandina Beach, four veterans rode across the Atlantic Ocean to raise awareness for suicide. That's wonderful. But they just rode across the ocean, they spent a bunch of money and no veterans are any better. So again, the awareness is there, but what are we gonna do to make a difference? So 22 push-ups isn't going to do it. 22 jumps out of an airplane isn't going to do it. We have to do something different. So where does Gratitude America, whoop, I skipped too quick, hold on. Where does Gratitude America come in? Well, how I see the problem is combat veterans can't uh, see a future until they deal with the past. And, you know, you often hear the, the sort of old adage of the light is on, but no one's home. And I believe that's very different. I believe somebody's home but the light is not on. The spirit, the flame that's inside of these veterans has been pushed down and suppressed. So they've lost purpose, right? What do we do? How are we different? Vets are some of the strongest people among us, and we just have to reignite that strength through training. So Gratitude America has two programs. We have our Warrior Path program and our Military Sport Retreat program, and these offer, offer opportunities for participants to regain control of their well-being and sense of purpose for life. The government is training and telling veterans that they can't work that they must live a diminished life of, uh, you know, a, a, a live as a diminished version of themselves. Here's the disability check. You can't work anymore. And that's awful. I meet veterans every day that have been told that they can't work, that could be working in your businesses, providing hard and dedicated service to our country through civilian employment, but the government's telling them that they can't work because they have PTSD. And I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Now, three things. And I know I'm short on time, but three things that I'd like to focus on is how we are, how are, how are we making a difference, right? I mean, there's lots of veteran organizations. There's 45,000 veteran serving nonprofits in the country. There's almost 4,000 in Florida alone. A lot are well-intentioned, but they struggle with trying to have an impact because it's very difficult to run a nonprofit organization that has an impact. I use the analogy of the rearview mirror. For 10 years of my life, I was kind of bummed out. I never had a PTSD diagnosis, but I was carrying the weight of multiple deployments over and over and over again, leaving my family, being shot at, and I was carrying this around. And I was always looking in the proverbial rearview mirror, lamenting the loss, the friends that I left behind that didn't come home, the, the struggles that my family was having because of you know, the lack of money, um, the awful things that I had to do, the things that I saw, instead of driving the car, looking at the massive windshield in front of me. Veterans are driving the car looking in the rearview mirror. The rearview mirror is for reference, not for residents. It's always going to be there. I don't care how many pills you take or how much talk therapy you do. When you look in the rearview mirror, you're going to see your struggles. So we have to train veterans to look forward, right? To live a life, a wonderful life for this great country that we have. So that's, you know, one of the tenets that we have is to try to shift that focus. Another huge belief that we have is in the power of the peer. That's my ugly mug on the top talking last month with a veteran. He's also a police officer. Um, but veterans tend to open up much more quickly when they know that somebody has been through similar things. We talk about walking the road from struggle to strength. And really what we're doing is we're just a little bit further down the road, the folks that are doing Warrior Path. We've all struggled and life will not always be perfect for none of us, right? We all struggle. So it's important that we um, use that peer support. The other thing that we find to be very helpful is we use training and not treatment. There's plenty of treatment out there. And if people need treatment, they can get it. But veterans do really well at being trained, right? I told you, we got a lot of good training to go to war. Veterans are good at learning. 
So we train them, right? And you can see there's a picture of two of our program directors there teaching. And you know what? The guy on the left, Mike Hilliard, my program director in the green shirt, shot in the head in Baghdad in 2008. He's up there teaching. When somebody says, I feel sorry for myself, it's really hard to listen to a guy who's been shot in the head and feel sorry for yourself, right? You know, and that, it's okay to laugh. He would laugh at it too, right? It's good. That's what we need. We don't need more uh, softness and more kindness. We need to take our veterans and say, you're better than this. We need you to be the next greatest generation. All right, real quickly before I close, I pulled some, oh, actually, hold on, I got excited. One more slide. Here's why I believe that we are having a greater impact, okay? Gratitude America is one small charity. We do 24 programs a year. We have a fairly small budget and we have an even smaller staff. But what's really amazing is our Warrior Path program is so effective that we have partnered with nine other organizations around the country to make our work exponential. So the same Warrior Path that's being done right here, just north of Baker County in Florida, is being done in Arizona and Virginia in Maine, in Texas, all over. So we're having a much broader impact. The challenge is, is while we're dealing with the mental health side, lots of veterans have traumatic brain injuries that we are not capable of treating and that veterans have struggled with in the government system getting help for. So we've partnered with 10 brain health centers around the country and one right in Jacksonville, UF Jacksonville. When we run into a veteran who has a traumatic brain injury, we can pass them over to Jacksonville and they can get the care they need there. So that right here at home, they're getting what they need at UF. If they have a substance abuse problem, which most veterans have a substance abuse problem, I hate to say it, but they do, then we have substance abuse partners. You got a problem with drinking, we can't help you yet until you get dry. So we're gonna send you to this place free of cost and we're gonna get you dried out. Then you come and you can work on growth. So it's a holistic solution, which is very different than a lot of these single one-offs that you see around the country. We're trying to unify and that is through what we call the Avalon Action Alliance. All right, <clears throat> just in closing, I felt like I can talk about my statistics and my numbers a lot, but I wanted you to hear it from the proverbial horse's mouth, okay? So we collect surveys from veterans five times in 90 days, and we ask them various questions. They, these are answers to the question of, what would you have done if you did not attend Warrior Path? What would you have done? What would your life have been like if you didn't attend Gratitude America's Warrior Path program? This is what the veteran said. This is a year's worth of comments, by the way. Oh, the other thing, the, the bold thing at the top there, a lot of veterans are going to Ukraine to fight because they feel like they, they, can't, they can't be successful here at home. They have to just keep fighting because that's all they've known for 20 years. Now, there is a positive side. This here is a graphical, what they call a word cloud representation of all those comments that I said. The larger the word, the more times it was said. So not a very positive thing. What would you have done with that warrior path, right? However, what does your life look like after attending Warrior Path. Life, feelings, reconnecting the head and the heart. So I'm short on time. I could talk about this for another five hours and not be done with the things that I've learned over the last seven years. What I will say is it's because of American business owners like yourself, people that are big in the community that keep us going. It's highly important that we don't just keep raising awareness, but we put our money where our mouth is and we try to make a change. And you know, if, if I can do that in some small part in our sort of region of Florida, we're having an impact nationwide. So we need to do more of this. And again, like I said, I'm short on time, but I appreciate the opportunity in which to speak with you all. Uh, it's really an honor. And again, uh, we could not do this good work without the support of yourselves. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Michael. Wow, I learned a lot more than I did last time. Just we had the amazing program, important work, um, and the, your approach is it works. I mean, you show us the stats, and just just want to thank you so much for that. I talk about you know I'm sure every life in here has been touched by by war and, and consequences after the war as well. So thank you so much. Um, 
On behalf of the Rotary Club of Gainesville, I would like to uh, present you with a certificate stating that we will be giving um, Cade Museum, which is where we are today. Uh, they have wonderful program, program, programming for youth, and they have scholarships for children that are under in underserved communities. And so we're going to be donating to that fund in your name. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that's all I can say. I just, it's very, very touching, Michael, very needed. Um, it, so on a lighter note, it's, it's great to see, um, you know, all familiar faces, but a lot of new faces and some returning faces. So uh, yeah. just please, all of you come back next week uh, when we will have a program with uh, past president, David Gracie, leading us um, for a very special service above self program. I look forward to seeing you and your guests next week. And, sir? Oh, oh, a closing. Oh, okay. Agenda, agenda. Okay. Um, quote of the day Guard zealously your right to serve in the armed forces, for without them, there would be no other rights to guard. John F. Kennedy. Uh, the Lucky Rotary Reading Safari. Raffle ticket number is 753, and I'm going to turn the meeting over to Pete, which, um, go, go for it, Pete. You're up. Meeting, yeah. <laughs> nope. Nope. I walked through a county courthouse square on a park bench. An old man was sitting there. I said, your old courthouse is kind of run down. He said, no. It'll do for our little town. I said, your old flagpole leans a little bit, and that's a ragged old flag you got hanging on it. He said, have a seat, and I sat down. Is this the first time you've been to our little town? I said, I think it is. He said, I don't like to brag, but we're kind of proud of that ragged old flag. You see, we got a little hole in that flag there when Washington took it across the Delaware. And it got powder burned the night Francis Scott Key sat watching it, writing, say, can you see? It got a bad rip in New Orleans with Packingham and Jackson tugging at its seams. And it almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag. But she waved on, though. She got a cut with a sword at Chancellorsville, and she got cut again at Shiloh Hill. There was Robert E. Lee and Beauregard and Bragg, and the south wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. On Flanders Field in World War I, she got a big hole from a Bertha gun. She turned blood red in World War II. She hung limp and low a time or two. She was in Korea and Vietnam. She went where she was sent by her Uncle Sam. She waved from our ships upon the briny foam. And now they've about quit waving her back here at home. In her own good land here, she's been abused. She's been burned, dishonored, denied, and refused. And the government for which she stands has been scandalized throughout the land. She's getting threadbare and she's wearing thin, but she's in good shape for the shape she's in. Well, she's been through the fire before, and I believe she can take a whole lot more. So we raise her up every morning and we bring her down every night. We don't let her touch the ground and we fold her up right. On second thought, I do like to brag because I am mighty proud of that ragged old flag. God bless America and God bless our armed forces. Um. 
That was an unexpected treat for me and you as well, I hope. Thank you, everyone. And with that, we're adjourned.